<laughs> okay, I don't know what I taped last time. It might have been nothing. All right, so everybody was saying how hard the Loctite was and all that stuff. Like, oh, you're going to have to heat it, all that stuff. I thought, well, I'd try it first. Well, I uh, I just took a little half-inch socket with a T40 on it. Cleaned everything out good with a, you know, picked everything out good. And then I put a screwdriver through this. has fiberglass handle and rubber handle so I don't damage anything. And here's a little secret, boys. You don't want to go through here where your surfaces are, okay? If you leave, if you leave your bolts tight, these are like not really doweled, but they're but they're um, keyed. So this is all keyed in. This is tight. You shouldn't break an ear off. That's why you're doing something wrong. Anyhow, so you don't want to go through here because you'll screw shit up. There's a lot bigger holes here anyhow. But anyhow, you just run this through here, like that, okay? You have it sitting on your, your box, or your, yeah, like this. So it's hitting on your hammer head. It's, it's got a good, you can get good tight on it, okay? Get this on here. Oh, now my furnace is wrong. Oh well. Anyhow, just go easy. Yeah, I know I'm gonna have to clean this out. I have to put some more Loctite back in. But it seems to be coming out okay. I'm uh, just going easy. Oh, I see. There's. It looks like it looks like blue right out of the factory. So I'm gonna put blue back on it. I'm not gonna get too crazy. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, anyhow. They may be like, oh, it's so scary, you can't do it. Well, blue comes out. Red, you put red in there, you'll have to heat them up with this. But I thought, eh, I'll try it, you know? So I got lucky this time. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But, uh, so it's pretty damn simple at this point now. Like I said, $8 a screw. You kind of want to be a little careful. I'm just a tight ass at the moment. <laughs> If I was rich, I'd be riding a 22, like my buddy over there. You gotta check my buddy's stuff out. That may be another video for another time, but he bought himself a, a 23, uh, what the hell is it, XCR Polaris. Uh, that fucker rolls, I tell you what. He whips up on just about everybody without the turbos. <laughs> Eats up cats, eats up skidoos. Can't eat a young a turbo, but maybe a short distance. But any uh, 8, 850, those players are definitely L grip. I mean, stock for stock. I'm not talking about somebody that wants to spend 30 grand on their sled to make it, you know. 900 or whatever the hell you want to do. I don't know if it's that much, but anyhow, you know what I mean. I can just buy them out of the box and go. Players still have a nice stuff. I used to run Polaris for many years. From 94 to 03. I run Polaris's and then I got good deals on cats, so then I just started going buying cats. Cats Valley's been a little more reliable to me, for me, than my Polaris's ever were, but those were the bad old days. Once I started buying cats, they were all fuel injected. 
know, the old tree poles. Got one or two to, what they call that? The batteryless EFI cables, you know? Alrighty. So now, you got that boy right there. And uh, the new one is over here. Ah! I got a charger on here. The one's over here. Just sitting down on my service plate. And uh, they, if I get it, uh, let's see. They drill little holes in it and make sure it's all balanced. So it really doesn't matter which way you put it on. You just get the holes lined up and screw it down. So this shouldn't affect the clutch. Clutch is balanced, this is balanced, you bolt it on, it should all roll. Actually, I was starting to get a tiny amount of vibration, I could tell, just by having, just by having those teeth missing. Ah, those Suzuki engines are smooth. I rode Buddy Skidoo as a 19, you know, an 850 with the E-Tech, and I rode my buddy's uh, 23 Polaris and everything. And this sled is, as far as vibrations in your handlebars go, is the smoothest I've ever owned. I've never had a sled this smooth. Maybe I got lucky. Maybe the rest of them vibrate like a sieve. Ouch. And then he, I just tweaked my finger. Ah, here. That's good. Put the electric back out on the old batteries going low on my old iPhone. Hmm. Big chunks off here. See in the bottom the holes, everything looks pretty clean. No, she isn't the flattest thing in the world. I just don't want a big, nasty bird hanging up here. She feels good. Doesn't even matter. Everything lines up, holes line up, everything lines up. Just a piece of stamped material. You probably find maybe a fine flow die, or they might have actually cut this with something. Probably a little induction heater to get it heated up, or they just maybe they put it in the oven. I don't know.
doesn't really matter because the Five, six. Anyhow, the flat heads, these tapers, these lock it in. It, it ain't moving around once these get torqued down. So I'm gonna wipe these off a little bit with a maybe a little wire brush or something. And I grab some more lock tape. So, lock tight, 242, thread locker, medium strength. Mix this shit up good. Yeah, that's the only bad thing. I don't use this stuff here every day. It does like to clog up. I gotta clog. So. See if this see if this works. Okay. I don't know if that was a I'm not sure what that was. Fifty thousands, sixteen? I think it was less. I think it was like the fifty thousands. One Little drop. Kind of rub it around with my finger. Anyhow, that's just how I do it. You got to do it any way you want to do it. This is just for your entertainment. Ha! Yeah, I am boring as hell, right? But you guys get the idea. I was like, maybe I was Googling wrong shit. I was like, I was Googling, you know, like how to, how to change ring gear and a, how to cat. With the team clutch on it or, I, did, I don't know, I did like four or five different things. Anyhow, I never get to find anything really. I got a little, here and there, somebody said, oh, I'm waiting on parts and this and that, and I'm blah, 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 and I don't have the flywheel, which, I mean, it's a simple job. But if you don't know, you know, I guess you just got to try. I was thinking I was going to have to torch it. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. <clears throat>
looking at this, these things are basically warped and twisted, and you just tighten them down to you get them basically locked in place. There's aluminum, and there's probably some kind of quartz pick on it too. This thing flying off at 8200 or 8500 or wherever the max RPM is. Anyhow, this is the right stuff, or it's what mine had. Unless they swapped clutches on me at the dealer or something when I bought it. Who knows? I doubt it. I want to, I want to, I doubt that they did. So much work. Yeah, yeah, I'm not doing it like a tire. I'll tell you one thing. This ain't a tire. This shit's flimsy as fuck. I'm a tool and die maker stamping. We stamp the shit out of this shit. All over. Once you anneal it and then heat treat it and all that crap, you gotta, you gotta bend, push this shit back in straight. Best you can. Some alloy material, but nothing, nothing that big. Then T2, I said, busted a million pieces. Oomph in it. Now, I'm an old man. Give me 55 in April. I don't have the strength I did when I was 25. So you 25 somethings, be careful you don't strip these out or just go get the torque wrench. That right there is not gonna fall off it. But after shits and giggles, I might look find the 